healing the mind. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for aligning my emotions. Ramados, every organ that's working out of place. God, it is by your grace that you're aligning all mazedebos. Oh, Father, we have believed in your report this day. And for this God, we honor you. We love on you, oh, daddy. Ah, God, we remember where you have brought us from. Oh, Father, we thank you. Oh, you are the same God yesterday and today. You are the same miraculous God. You are the God that does wonders. Oh, Father, God, we say thank you. Come on and lift up your voices. Oh, show reverence to the all almighty God, the sovereign God. Ramosa, lepende ne makanta, ramadasante yadabosa, the God that restores. Ramosa, the God that aligns. Remeze, ikanta ramadosa, ratante ne makanti. Ah, the God that continues to block every evil arrow that has been shot against your life. Kadebosa, zedemekantaya. The one that protects us from seen and unseen danger. I said earlier you made it here safely. Not because you're such a great driver. Not because you never had an accident. But it is because of the hand of God. And the finger of God. That protects, that proceeds. Remez and Ratu So do not take this time lightly in his presence. Lift up your voices and offer a praise unto God today. Maze de le bacanta rabasanto rapa. Le pente le bacanta ramade bazente. Rimagadura bazanta rakai. Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And even as today has been declared a day of restoration, I want us to lift up our hands and I want us to pray that the heavens will be open even as the man, even as God will use the man of God to realign and align and to call forth back your destiny into its rightful place to align your steps to make back every crooked way straight Adabosa. We are, we are in need of an encounter this day. And so we want our spirits to be on one accord. We want our hearts to be in tune with the Spirit of God. I want us to lift up a prophetic sound as we usher into our worship. We're saying, God, whatever you're doing this day, please don't pass us by. Please don't pass you by. Please don't pass your family by. Let a word be released that realigns, that restores Adosa. God, we have gathered. We are in high anticipation of your move. Ramadosata. Ah, God, do as you will. Do as you please, God. Every limitation, we take it off. Holy Ghost, have your way. Take your place. Blow a fresh wind. Ah, from the front to the back. From the left to the right. Oh, God, you're consuming fire. God, let it consume everything that is not of you. Let the heavens, let the heavens, let the heavens be open over each and every one that will enter into this room, God. Ramadan, everything 
that will be done today God let it be for your glory 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 Without the music pushing, can we just lift up a sound in this place? Can we just, come on, lift up your hands, lift your head. Come on, come on, come on. Lift up your hands. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Open up your mouths and just worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, come on, open up your mouths. I just want you to release a sound before we go anywhere. I just want you to lift up a sound in this place. Come on, be thankful, be thankful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. You are worthy. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are worthy. You are worthy. So, Ramandala Soma. Seconds, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh yeah, oh Jesus, yeah, 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 oh Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yahweh, 
loving and keeping God. Yahweh, loving and keeping God. Yahweh, loving and keeping God. Oh, oh, oh. Yahweh, loving and keeping God. Can we sing it loud? See Yahweh.
some people say, say hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Sing it out, sing it out. Uh-huh. Hey, yeah, yeah. Say hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Say hey.
from you again. Spirit Christ, ay, ay, ay. Elohim. Come on, sing it out. Say, I speak in tongues. Yeah, in the Holy Ghost. My Spirit Christ, Elohim. See, ay, 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 see, ay, ay.
Jehovah is your name. Can we sing it now? Say Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. Somebody say, so we lift you high. Yeah. 
30 seconds I just want you to lift up your hands lift up your hands and worship come on fill this place with your worship Somebody open up your mouths and worship.
to give the announcements. Give her a round of applause. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Victory Faith Chapel International. I'm not going to stand here before you too long because if you're like me, you came here this evening with a great expectation from the prophet that we have here on tonight. So let's get to the announcements. So we are in our year of legacy, and this month we are recognizing the power of prayer and fasting. Um, Victory Faith Chapel International is a non-denominational church with the firm beliefs in the teachings of the word of God, the healing, and the prophetic ministry. And our mission, vision, ultimately is to train, equip, empower, and release the people of God for the work of the ministry according to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. Now, we have three locations. Our main location is here in West Palm Beach. Um, our main location is here in West Palm Beach. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Our address here is 3812 South Jog Road. Um, Green Acres, Florida, 33467. Our sister location is in Orlando. Woo! <laughs> VFC Orlando is located at 9456 South Orange Blossom Trail, Orlando, Florida, 32837. And last but not least, our international branch, 
which is located in Ghana, Africa, at Regent University, Regent University, Accra, Ghana. Now I'm going to ask that everyone stand on your feet as you know it's our custom to do when giving honor where honor is due to our overseer, our set angel of our house, our papa, doctor, prophet, apostle, <laughs> Seth Amor Boateng. Yes, yes. Woo, 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 woo. All right, so um, want to thank, oh, you can be seated. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank all of our visitors on social media and in the house tonight. If we do have any visitors this evening, if you would stand, please. All right, all right. <laughs> VMC, what do we say to our visitors? Welcome. We thank you for visiting with us this evening. You could have been anywhere, but you decided to be here tonight. And trust me, it's not by chance. Um, I'm sure our ushers probably provided you with a visitor's card. If not, you can raise your hand and they'll provide you one um, before the evening is over. Um, our weekly scheduled events are as follow. Normally on Monday and Tuesdays, we have our prayer line, which is from 9 to 10 p.m., but currently we are still doing our 100 days of prayer, so that has been suspended until that is over um, on which will end July 12th. On Wednesdays, sorry, on Thursdays we have our currently right now, which is our prophetic teachings, um, which is normally our Bible study, which is from 7 to 9 p.m. in room 108. On Fridays we have our victory service, which is from 8 to whenever God releases us. <laughs> um, and Sunday, of course, we have our victory service from 3 to 6 p.m., Every first and third Saturday, our I Can Generation um, gets together, which is ages 15 to 25 at 5 p.m. And yes, so moving forward, our Papa's book, Peculiarity, is still available. If you haven't purchased it, I advise you definitely to purchase it. It's so many great nuggets and things of that nature to really get you to tap into your difference and making a difference. Um, we are still offering Destiny Counseling, which you can sign up by visiting www.VictoryFaithChapel.org. This is a one-on-one -on -one session where Papa is able to really guide you into what God has destined for you or giving you interpretation of certain dreams and things of that nature. So it's a great thing to do. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to be before you too long. I'm just going to wrap this up real quick. Uh, make sure I'm not missing any good things. Oh, we also do have our prayer shawls. Um, if you weren't able to get one on Friday, so we'll see um, Sister Doreen in the back for you to be able to do that. We also still have our prayer box. So if there's any prayers that you need or would like to put in for our prayer words to pray for you, that is available as well. So with that, I'm going to pass the mic back over to <laughs> our moderator, Sister Babby. Okay, so we have another form of worship that we're about to get into. So I say that you have your hearts ready, your mind ready to give an offering to God. So who knows what time it is? Which is? Which is? Which is? Come on. All right, all right. So we have three ways to give that is going to be on the board. So we have... PayPal, we have sell, we have Giveify, and we ha also have text to give. So if you do have any forms of payment in your hands today, whether it's a card or credit card, we have Sister Joseph, who is right here on my left. We also have Mother Doreen, who is on our right, if you have any checks or money orders or cash to give. Amen. As Minister Teddy lift up a song, may we cheerfully give unto the Lord. Amen. Living 
thank you for allowing us to be here today, Father God, to be in your house, to glorify you and exalt you, O Lord. I pray, Father God, that those who have given their tithes and offering, may you bless them in abundance, O God, for they have worked and brought their fruits into the storehouses for you to bless them, O Lord. I pray, Father God, for abundance. I pray, I pray for plentiful, O Lord. May it be over full, O God. May it fill their cups and overflow to other people and their family, O God, and those surrounding them, O Lord. That not one person in their family or those around them may feel helpless, O Lord. I pray, Father God, that those who have nothing to give, may you give them, Father God, an open door for them to take up that opportunity, Father God, to work, Father God, and make fruit, O God. And I pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So if I could have everyone stand up. As we honor the great man of this house, the one who God has set foot and ordained, the one that God has made a way for him to come to West Palm Beach, Dr. Reverend Seth Amabota. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that one was for me, can you celebrate Jesus Christ in this place? Can you celebrate Jesus Christ in this place? Just move around and welcome about five people and tell them I'm so excited to see you in church. Just. Oh. Won't you come? Come like you promised. Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, won't you come, come like you promised, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, lift your hand, be on your feet, won't you come, I'm like you promised Pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit With your hands lifted Won't you come Someone call on the name of 
of Jesus. Say, Lord, come like you promised tonight. Come like you promised tonight. Come like you love, you love like a father. Father, is here. The Lord is here. Father, we thank you for an open heavens. Bless us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Please keep standing. This weekend in Orlando, we have experienced the hand of God.
through a servant that he sent all the way from Belgium. Amen? To be a blessing to God's people. He's a prophet of God. We've learned about the fivefold ministry. We know who pastors are, who evangelists are, who teachers are, who apostles are. And we've talked extensively about the prophetic ministry. And I believe that tonight you are going to experience and witness the prophetic on another level. We basically talked about the prophetic gifts. But this man doesn't only have the prophetic gift, but he carries the mantle of a prophet. Amen? And operates in the office of a prophet. And one thing that I love about him, he is also a teaching priest. I love prophets who know the word. Amen? And we have been blessed so much in Orlando. And I'm like, no. West Palm must taste of the grace of God. I think we have to close because they are not ready for you, prophet. The Orlando people were more ready for you. So let's share the grace of God. If you are ready, can you give a shout unto God? You are not shouting, you are memoring. You are memoring. I need a real shout. These people, I think you have to go home. I, I can't feel you guys. Hallelujah. And so, Prophet Benjamin is a major prophet that God is using all over the world. And I know most of you were watching online and you saw the grace of God that was upon him. And um, I honor the grace of God on your life, man of God. Your ministry is authentic. And I want us to receive him with an open heart. Receive him with an open heart. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. I want us to embarrass Prophet Benjamin for Joe. With a standing ovation and a victory, welcome. Let's welcome Prophet Benjamin. Somebody clap your hands together for Jesus. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, clap your hands together for Jesus. The bigger your clap, the bigger your testament. The louder your shout, the louder your blessing. And give God some praise in the house today. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us say amen. Now, before we proceed, I need you to walk to five people and then tell five people, God shall bless me more than you. Walk to at least five people, tell them, God is going to bless me more than you. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is wonderful. Lift your hands above your head. Lift your hands above your head. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. We sing casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts. It's all we've come to do. I'm all shy. Casting crowns, lift your hands higher. Lifting hands, oh no more shy. Bowing hearts. It's all we've come to. do. Adonai say, Adonai. 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 We sing, we will rise. We will rise. Lift your hands up. Sing, casting crown, casting crown. Lift your hands, somebody shut. We are 
are bowing before you so That's all we've come to do Lift your voice and call him Say, cast the crown, say, cast the crown We are left in our church We are bowing before you That's all we've come to do Lift your voice and call him Adonai Chuck
Ti. Now make room for to receive. You and I, Jesus. You are somebody lift your hands above your. I'll make room for to receive.
your name upon me. Breathe. In fact, just breathe your name, say. Just, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. We sing your hair, what hair is your name? Your hair, what hair is your name? Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name, say. Just breathe your name upon me. We sing out of my belly shall flow river. Okay. This is the song of the year in this house. We sing out of my belly. Say, out of my belly. Wave your right hand up to go. Your voice we sing out of my belly say out of my belly shall flow river river find a neighbor for me we sing out of your belly say
Lift up your hands. If you can speak in tongues, speak in tongues. Speak over your destiny. That the hand of the Lord shall cover you. My God shall preserve you. And my God shall hold you. You are lifted and blessed. It is settled. Let us say amen. Amen. Clap your hands together for Jesus. Oh, somebody clap your hands. Are you blessed? Bro. So before I, are we blessed? Are we blessed? Are we blessed? All right. So before we sit down, I would really want us to do one thing here, friends. And I'll be glad to have you stand on your feet for me in all humility, friends. In all humility. Make sure you are on your feet. In all humility. Be upstanding. Be upstanding. Be upstanding. Your value in life is weighed on who you are connected to. Let's work on this one. In this life, God has never regarded any human being until he saw your debt of honor for the people he brings your way. Any human being that finds it hard to recognize men for who they are can never work in the experience they be made of. The gateway into a man's inheritance is to look at them from how God sees them. The future you are believing God for is not in heaven. The future has been imbibed in men. It's your responsibility to understand what it means to give them the honor they deserve so they can give you the grace to work in that. Only few men have been chanced to walk upon the surface of the earth as God predestined for them because they lack the understanding on the concept of honor. When you appreciate men for who they are, you are given the ability to walk like them. Trust me. The church in this end time is losing the kingdom culture of honor whereby we begin to trivialize the worth and the value of man look at me friends in this life before God gives you what you deserve he needs to see who you are connected to life is connected to men who have what it takes to appreciate people for who they are if you can uphold this principle you will succeed everywhere the Lord told me years ago that every failure in life is connected to dishonor. Any human being that failed walked in dishonor. And trust me, church, when you honor men for who they are, you are given the ability to walk as God. Trust me, there are very few people that can achieve this in the shortest possible time of their life. And that's just the beginning of their destiny. So when you see people who have achieved so much, we appreciate them. This house is blessed to have Apostle Dr. Setamu Apote. Do, do I have some church members in the house? What do we say to our papa in the house? Man of God, we deeply appreciate you. And we are super grateful unto God for that which the Lord is using you for. Thank you for obeying God's voice. Thank you for honoring God's voice. Thank you for the love you've shown unto us. We deeply love you, sir. Once again, with Jesus, let's appreciate him. He's a good man. Thank you, man. And to our wonderful pastors in the house, the Lord bless you. Let us say amen. amen. So in an hour, we should be done from this place. Is that okay? So sit down like a millionaire. And I'll be very glad if the ushers could help me with 
the smaller pulpit, right? So that I can go because you that's fine. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes, sir. So that we can have our one-on-one message today. Let us say amen. amen. Great. You know, whenever men like Apostle Seth give you the pulpit to preach, you need to ask God to give you grace. Because this man is actually Bible encyclopedia. So if you make any mistake, he will correct you. I'm telling you. Are you blessed, friends? Amen. The book of Joel. If you don't read your Bible, Joel is after Genesis. That is only if you don't read your Bible. But if you read your Bible, Joel is after Hosea. So, if you don't study the Bible, when you open Genesis, between Genesis and Exodus, you find Joel there. But if you study your scriptures, it is actually after Hosea. Are we blessed, friends? I feel like teaching today. Oh, God. This is wonderful. The book of Joel, chapter 2, the verse 28. Do you know the song? When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word where the glory sheds on our way while we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, we sing trust and obey. <laughs> For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. From the rising of the sun. <laughs> To the setting of the same emotion. Your name is to me, our Lord. Is it Alright, so let's do the verse 26. Verse 9 to experience restoration in Orlando. So we can extend that same grace as well. I'll be blessed, friends. Alright, so let's do from 26, please. Are we good to go? All right. Joel 2, 26. Yes, sir. And ye shall eat in plenty. Yes, sir. And be satisfied. Yes, and sir. praise the name of the Lord your God. Yes, sir. That hath dared wondrously with you. I go. And my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. My God. And that I am the Lord your God. My God. And known as, uh, and my people shall never be ashamed. All right. Can I teach here? Give me 20 minutes and I'm done with the service. Just 20 minutes. I need your attention, friend. That's powerful. Before I begin with the sermon, let me say this here. The average believer believes that his or her petition can only be rendered to God in the place of prayer. But the mature believer understands that prayer is one of the systems that God has allocated for the advantage of the believer. In other statements, the only system through which God has given unto man in order for them to transport that which they think of is the power of the mindset. Hear me, church. Never in your life ever think that God is only meant to listen to what you think about yourself in the place of prayer. Never assume that God is going to give what you think you deserve if you have only prayed. People don't know that that which they have in mind is the identity they have of themselves in God's kingdom. The Lord has never dealt with anybody because of the name they carry. Because in God's kingdom, your name is not what you are called. Your name is what you do. Hear me, church. 
Whenever we stand before the Lord in the place of the altar, the only thing that says to our defense is the purity of the mindset. Until people understand how powerful the mind is and how to communicate God's will through the mindset, we can never walk in the glory of God's kingdom. Because in God's kingdom, we transport ideas through our mindset. In God's kingdom, our face is not what can be seen by man, but the hidden thought of a man. It's, it's a pity that most people feel that they can only come into the fulfillment of God's life when they begin to pray. And God says, you may pray to God seeking for an answer. And for strange reasons, you may never come in the alignment of a life because the mindset never backed you. Look at me. God does not listen to what you say with your mouth alone. The mindset must back what you say so it can give you what you deserve in this life. Until the word of God is taught with so much excellence, people can never walk in the very life of God himself. It is possible to come to church and not grow in the experience of God's promises. Not because God can't bless the issue. Is people have not changed how they think in God's way. Look at me. There are systems that God has allocated for men to walk in God's life. Your miracle has got nothing to do with the arrival of your answer. It begins with the mind changes. If somebody tells you, the senior prophet, I received that which I wanted from the Lord in the place of prayer. Check. There was a pattern allocated that gave him the answer. It's got to do with the mindset. Jesus Christ stood in front of the public and read himself and said, Today, what the prophet said has now come to pass. He read himself because he had to indoctrinate into himself his own mindset. Until people begin to think as God has said concerning their life, they can never walk in God's promises. I'm telling you, friends. Hear this word. God is telling us here that he wants to restore unto you that which the enemy has stolen. Go to verse 26. God wants to give you unto you that which the enemy has taken away from you. Oh, hear me, church. But for strange reasons, he never started by telling you what the enemy had taken. Jump to 25 for me, friends. For strange reasons. Now, I was thinking that God will tell somebody that uh, I'm going to give you the husband that couldn't stay with you. Probably I'm going to give you the kids you've wanted. But for strange reasons, he says, I'm going to give you unto you the years that the locust has eaten. Now, if you have been to the farm before, you get to realize that locusts don't eat years. They don't eat time. They eat the harvest of the man see. So why is it that God says he wants to restore you by first giving you the years you've lost? In that statement, in God's life, there is no restoration until God first brings you to the place you have to be in God's kingdom. If somebody tells you that God restored them by giving unto them what they lost, but God didn't give them the position they once had in God's kingdom. He never honored them. Restoration has never begun with a man's lost item. Restoration begins when he gives you authority again. Hear me, church. In God's life, he does not give men what they deserve. In God's life, he makes men to become what they deserve. You didn't hear me. Look at me. We are going somewhere. <laughs> In God's kingdom, what you receive by a hand can become your enemy. Because the enemy has the way of creating comfort in your spirit, man, that you would be so comfortable with what you have received. Are you aware that there are people here the Lord blessed them with certain privileges and for strange reasons they forgot the very things they had to do in order for God to bless them continually. So he will not give you by hand what you want. He makes you become what you want. Okay, let me break it down again for you friends. Do we know Adam in the Bible? Are you aware that Adam never prayed for anything in the Bible? Talk to me church. Where did you hear Adam pray for miracle only? Where 
did you hear Adam praying for a miracle car? Because on the account of his blood, whatever he wanted was already his. <laughs> you didn't hear me, church. Are you aware God never named the animals in the Garden of Eden? Are you aware of that? But whatever Adam said, God accepted because God lived in Adam. You hear me, church? You didn't hear me. Look at me, friends. Apostle, we do tell people that Adam lived in Eden. But if you look at the very life of Adam, you realize his residence was not Eden. His residence was God himself. Look at me, everybody. I'm going somewhere. I want you to know that Adam in the spirit was created by God as the human version of God himself. Meaning, Adam was not just a human being. Adam was a hybrid man. He was a spirit that had what it takes to enter into human flesh and still come out of it. His residence had got nothing to do with where he stayed, but who he was. Hear me, church. So whatever he named was so because it was God that lived in him. Listen, gentlemen. If God does not bring you back to where you stand in the spirit, and you receive by hand what you pray for. What you pray for can become your enemy. Because things can lose value in time. Let me church. God is telling the church. That restoration does not begin. When people receive the lost item. It begins when it takes them back to where they stand in the spirit. Where you stand is your life in God. Where a man stands. It's a man's life in the spirit. Hear me, friends. Look at me, church. Look at me, church. I'm going somewhere. Sometimes, a man may lose everything and ask himself, what at all have I done to go through this? The Bible says Job was a holy man. He didn't know the enemy had the discuss about his life. God says, you are permitted to touch whatever the man has, but you dare not touch his soul. He was there when all of a sudden his mates told him that it looks like spiritually something is happening to you. All your kids have died. The Bible says Job had 10 children and they were dining in their elder brother's home. There was a strong wind that came from the east that killed them all. Can you imagine that a man that had 10 kids stood in loyalty before the Lord and God wanting to prove to the devil how faithful Job was, he allowed his children to die. My question is, God is all-knowing. So couldn't God tell that he was still going to bless the life of Job because Job was going to turn the place of test, yet he allowed his children to die? My question is, what if God allows something about you to die just to prove to himself who you are? How well can you stand So God had to make somebody lose 10 children in a day just to prove the man's loyalty. The Bible says he was a holy man. He was a holy priest. The Bible says every blessed day, Job would give arms unto God, sacrificing on behalf of his children that even if they go against God's counsel, God will seek mercy and protect them. And God had to watch for 10 kids to die in a day. And God didn't tell Job. Please look at me, friends. Ten children died in one day. And God couldn't tell Job. No. You're not getting me. How many mothers do we have in this house? If you're a mother in this house and you have a child, lift up your hands for me. Do you know the difficulty in conceiving a baby? And you have ten. These were no babies. These were adults. Let's imagine that the adult was like 40 years old. So 40 years of a man's existence dies off in a minute. All because God wanted to prove who Job was. Huh. You truly don't deserve what you are praying for if you can't bear the pain of a life. You truly don't deserve what you think you really want in God's life 
if you can't bear the pain of that life you're asking God for. Because a miracle has got nothing to do with the realm of an answer. A miracle begins when God takes men into realm for possibilities. Aye. Ah. So Mary was asked by God to carry the coming Savior. She didn't ask for it. The angel said that you are going to receive favor. And for strange reasons, for strange reasons, for strange reasons, her husband was now ready to let go of Mary because Mary said a strange spirit came and said, I'll be pregnant for him. Just imagine you were a lady here and you tell your husband that a spirit came and said, I'll be pregnant for him. And your husband is forced to believe that no man what if you have a brother and your brother tells you my wife had a dream that the Holy Ghost came and said you'll be pregnant for me and you are supposed to believe Apostle Doctor that the dream was true now talk to me church now, the Bible says Elizabeth was holy Together with her husband, these were holy people. Yet, they were buried for ages. No, sometimes when people are making demands for things in the spirit, God wants to see if you have what it takes to stand the battle and the pressure. Because when life begins to request for things, life can take everything in a minute. And God would intentionally keep quiet to see you go through that battle. Now, don't get me wrong. No, what if after service, you lose a dear husband and then God is expecting you to give God praise for the death of your husband? How does it work? The Bible says after Job heard of, his, of the death of his children, the Bible says he shaved off his hair, tore his clothes and gave God praise and thank God. My question is, what kind of worship did he render unto God after the children died? What, what, what did he say? No, be honest. You are in pain. Your kids are dead. And you are asked to give God worship. Now, if the worship the guy rendered was evil or bad, Bible would have attested to that. And somebody gave God worship in the place of his dismissal. What happened to him? His wife says, if you claim your God is faithful, why will God permit boils to affect your life? Why don't you curse God and die? Huh? Many have cursed God in their heart. Many have neglected God in their heart. They prayed for things and things never happened. And they asked, what at all have we done to go through this? Hey. No, what if you are sacked from your job? And the man tiki also versus. No, what if your job tells you we are stopping you without any reason? And God says you are supposed to give a tithe from that money. When there's no means of survival, what will you do? Jesus said, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabatani, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? I didn't ask to come upon the earth. You said you have seen people dying on earth. And I, I said, let me come and die on your behalf. And now I want help. You've now turned your back against me. What did I do to go through this? Hey. And the Bible says, heavens were quiet. It didn't happen for a day. It didn't happen for two days. It took place for years. Apostle, now what do we tell these people? That favor begins from the graveyard. <laughs> no. And then man could say, Nah, you're not getting me. Tell the church that if God sees you're, so you're going to rise up, he begins from the graveyard. The tomb is not only for death. The tomb is for life. But if the life must appear, you need to die. What will happen? Have you so much prayed for things and things never came to you and you wonder why God never answered you? God says something hasn't died yet. He wants to see what has died. What shall be our message? Oh. Man of God, the Bible says Saul who became poor went after Christians who were innocent and they began to kill them. My question is, if we claim God protects our lives, so God had to watch an innocent man kill us for the sake of the gospel and God couldn't save us and you call this God good? The wife says, how can you call this God good? 
He made you lose your children in one day and you call him good. Who bewitched you? Don't blame Peter. He invested everything to follow Jesus. And after three days, he thought the man would come back to life. And there was no public show of the man's resurrection. He says, let me go back to fishing. Ah! People just don't follow. When people follow, they follow with certain kind of expectation. If things don't go as planned, they wonder what has God done to them. Hey. Apostle, it is very dangerous when a Christian goes through an unfavorable season unannounced. When they go through certain hardship without God not first telling them what they're about to go through. Look at me, church. God will never tell you where he's going to test you. He will never tell you how he's going to test you. Sometimes his test can take away everything from you. And he wants you to stay uncompromised. If you compromise yourself in the place of pain, you have insulted integrity. Because in the place of pain, the cloud of witness will have to watch you. Apostle Paul says, for we have been surrounded by a cloud of witness. Hey, look at me, church. Paul is watching you. <laughs> Noah is watching you. Abraham is watching you. If you give up in the place of pain, you've insulted God. Because before the Lord allowed the pain to come, he first spoke about you in the heavens. Are you going to fail God because of hardship? No. <laughs> no. No. Man of God. You are in the place of pain. And the enemy has presented temptation to you. When you know you can do this in secrecy and be okay and have what you want. But for the fear of God, you want to stay staunch. Meanwhile, you are suffering. The devil says, Jesus, can't you see you are hungry? Prove to us you are the son of the living God. Why don't you turn this stone into bread? The enemy said, no, no. Let me find other ways to also tell Jesus. that why don't you bow down before me, ladies and gentlemen? Who would you want to have power in this life? My friends, we live in a very funny world. Until people understand pain, they can never walk in purpose. Amen. Telling you. Amen. Hear me, church. Let me show you the God you've never seen. God is good when things are good for you. When things are bad, you may change your language. Hey! Can lose it? versus. Man of God. I know a man who waited on God for 17 years together with a wife. Are you aware that the, the man stayed faithful to the lady for 17 years they were barren? Until God finally gave the man a baby. And on the day of delivery, the baby died with a wife. The man said, so God, why did you allow me to wait for 17 years? Hey, hey. No, is this God? Is this, is this the God you really want to serve? He told them that you have left everything to follow me. Even me, God, I have no place to lay my head. Aye. <laughs> Cananos, what if you are asked to release a prophetic offering here? Thank God we live in a prophetic church whereby every now and then people are giving seeds and things become so tough. And you're wondering when at all is God going to give you one third of everything you have given? When? Think about it. He wants to now tell you that in order for you to have that which you have lost, he has to first give you time. What's God saying here? Hear me, friends. My last word. And I pray for you. In this life, Apostle Doctor, the Lord looks at men from the lenses of who they stand for in the spirit. You didn't hear me? Oh, my words are so deep. Father, help me. Apostle, if God wants to relate with Apostle Dr. Seth, God will never relate with Apostle here through his name. Because his name in God's kingdom must be connected to his character. Aye. This man is called Dr. Francis. If God is to call him Francis, he's not calling him Francis so he comes to him. He's calling him Francis so that the character in the name can find expression. <laughs> he called him Abraham not because he wanted to change his name but because his identity was the father of all nations <laughs> hear me church when God begins to relate with man 
he looks at them from the lenses of what they're born for. And you know one thing? Before he gives you what you really want, he has to check if you have the inner tenacity to carry that. And the only thing that can give you satisfaction is complete pain. Look at me. My last word. The Bible says Christ was beaten to death. The Bible says he was stripped naked on the cross of Calvary. My question is, a God at 33 had to die a shameless death on the cross of Calvary to prove love to God. Where was God? You hear my message? <laughs> Are you wondering why he went naked? Let me show you this. Apostle Paul put out my revelation that when Adam lived in the Garden of Eden, he lived as a naked man. When God came to them after eating of the fruit, he asked, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I can't come to you because I'm naked. He says, who told you that you are naked? Are you aware that the identity God had of Adam in his mind was nakedness? It is called intimacy with the Father. Apostle Paul says Jesus Christ came in the image of the first Adam. In other words, whatsoever Adam represented, even though he was called Jesus, he also had the same image like the first Adam. That was why the Bible says when Adam went against the counsel of God, please hear me, church. When Adam went against the counsel of God, the Bible says in the spirit, he couldn't cover himself with the lamb's blood. He had to cover himself with the fig tree. A time came Jesus went hungry and he wanted to actually pluck a fruit from a tree. It was actually a fig tree. He cursed the tree. Do you know why? Because the tree just didn't speak to him. The tree said, remember years ago in the Garden of Eden, I covered your shame. Have you come again here for me to cover you? God had to curse that tree. Hear me, church. Hear me, church. The Bible says in a vision, Christ had to go naked. Because the very image of the first Adam was nakedness. In order for life to accept you and envelop you back into itself, life will strip you naked. Because when you become covered, the glory of what can be seen by men, until you are left blank for men to see what you are made of, his glory can't shield you. Trust me, friends. Life will punish you. Life. Life will make you feel useless. Life will sometimes cause you to close your mouth. Life will give you many options apart from serving Jesus. Ah. Can I this? How about so? Can I break the revelation here? It's a very deep one. I, I want to close, but it's like the more I'm, 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 I want to close, 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 the more things are happening. Apostle, there's something God told me, and it, it shook me big time. Can I say this here? Whenever we meet as a church, Hear this word. Whenever we meet as the church, in God's kingdom, we are called the ecclesia. I want you to know that the church is not just a place where Christians gather to worship. It's a place whereby God has a portion for men to grow in with the Father. So that we look like the Father here. I'm not coming to the church. Talk to me, friends. When we enter into intimacy with the Father, I don't have to see you as where you're coming from. I need to look at you from how God sees you. <laughs> you didn't hear me. Do you know why Judas had to kiss Jesus? This is the issue. You are wondering why Judas had to betray Christ with a kiss. Before the event took place, Jesus asked the people, what do men say that I am? Some said you are Elijah. Some said you were Isaiah. Jesus was shocked that the people he was feeding didn't know who he was. Until by revelation, Peter said you were the son of the living God. He says, flesh did not reveal this to you. 
when Peter made mention of this revelation, hear me, friends. All the disciples now finally entered into the experience of God himself. In other statements, Jesus began to look like Peter. Jesus began to look like Judas. So those who didn't stay in intimacy with Jesus Christ, they saw them as twin brothers and twin sisters. So Judas had to use a kiss to fish out Jesus. If not, they would have chosen Peter as Christ himself. Whenever we gather as the ecclesia, God begins to work with us based on the clan we are connected to. Christ calls himself. He's the son that came from the tribe of the Lion of Judah. To God, your parents were only graced by God to bring upon the earth. But your true source is connected to the clan you stand for. Remember, Jacob had 12 sons. Some were called Issachar. Some were called Judah. Some were called Benjamin. Remember that these people, their names stand for a law they discovered in the spirit. The Bible says Issachar was receptive in a place of time. So whenever people become sensitive to time in the spirit, God calls them Issachar in the spirit. So I may look at Apostle Seth and say, Apostle, in the spirit, because of your in-depth receptivity to time, you are Issachar in the spirit. Now, before the Lord apportions unto you what you really deserve, this is where your client coming from, he needs to see if you can bear the same pain they went through. What you are going through is bigger than your age. Do you know why? Because your blood is older than you. Yeah. Huh. Hear me, friends. When life requests for blood, understand this. You are rendering a purpose that came into being before time began with you. When life requests for something you have so much love for, remember you are delivering something bigger than your age. If you fail to honor God in the place of pain, you have not just given up on yourself. You have insulted the clan of heaven because heaven watched you. Restoration does not begin when God gives you what you've lost. It begins when God takes people back to where they stand from the spirit. But teach the church that pain is the birthright of every believer. Hey. <laughs> Amen. No, sir. Velem Rantos. Sometimes people make it in life. And we call them lucky men and lucky women. Ah, luck has no altar in heaven. <laughs> luck has never been in existence ever since God made the world. The pain of men qualifies men to the fraud seat. If you want to weigh a man's teacher, check how much I've borne pains. It is how much you have borne the pain that will tell us what you deserve in this life. Trust me. Life will judge you. And, left when, and when life finally requests for, from you what you think you could never render, what are you going to say? Let me show you two things that will help people work in restoration whenever they go through pains in life. Number one, the last word. Understand this. Until people understand the place of total obedience, they can never be restored to whatever they've lost in the spirit. Look at me. The enemy is never after your life. The enemy is after the rank you carry in the spirit. Oh, you didn't hear me, church. Apostle, come here. Is that F sharp? Give me the note. I play so well. Also, when, when the man began to play the piano, I saw angels pouring rain on this man. Oh. Powerful. He says, this man will not just enjoy the blessing alone. He will enjoy the blessing with Stephanie. Yeah. Oh. 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 
Matakusa Tapa. Ah, just play for me. Sir, am I talking too much? Then I asked the Lord, wave your hands on me, church. What oh, name fits you? We sing. And he said, Big Apostle, this strings is producing twins in the spirit. And then I asked the Lord, wave your hands. What oh, name fits you? Hey. And he said, Wave your hands. Then I ask the Lord. What name for you? And he said, We sing out the hallowed one. Say, Yeah, the hallowed one. Oh, Mama Shaya. Yeah, the holy one. Hey, Yahweh. to use him for. Never in your life think that your miracle is only something God wants to give you for you alone. The purpose of the testimony is to advance his kingdom and possibilities. Because your life becomes an example for men to come into God because of what you stand for. Huh? Somebody can be barren for so many years that when they finally give birth unto a child, just at the hearing of people's testimony, people give their all to God. Even though he gave you a baby, he has caused men to come into God because of you. So, if the enemy wants to attack your life, he needs to look at what is happening to the kingdom when you become an advantage. Oh, am I communicating, church? So in the spirit, understand this, sir. If he fights this man and his life wouldn't give him any essence in destiny, he has lost. The enemy will not enter into a place that has no hope for the kingdom. So once he realizes that this man has what it takes to change the life of many because of his testimony, he will fight him. And look at me. What he receives as a testimony is only a one-third of God's original plan for him. Because true blessings in God begins with unseen things. The first qualification is that he brings you to a rank. Whereby when you call a name in the spirit, because God has reserved a covenant with the name, he gives you an answer. Hear me, friends. I want you to know this. There are certain realms in God's kingdom God can apportion covenant in the name that whenever you call the name, he must answer. He says, whenever you call me the God of Abraham, I remember the sacrifices of Abraham. So automatically, I must move. The God of Abraham is the God that moves when people obey. Whenever people become sad and they want to experience laughter in life, he says, call me the God of Isaac. Because the God of Isaac gave Sarah the ability to laugh. Whenever people have rested for so long and they want to have rest, call me the God of Jacob. Because Jacob wrestled with the angel and God gave them rest. Whenever you are seeking for the fruit of the womb and there's no baby, call me the God of Hannah. Because Hannah so much prayed unto God give Hannah a baby. Whenever people want to cross the Red Sea and they are confused, he says, call me the God of Moses. Because Moses crossed the Red Sea. When people are seeking for
for wisdom. He says, Call me the God of Solomon. Because Solomon asks for wisdom. When people are worshiping and he wants to accept their praise, he says, Call me the God of David. Because David was a worshiper. Whenever people stand on the sea and they cannot find any fish in the sea, he says, Call me the God of Peter. Because Peter was confused and I showed him the way. Lift up your hand, somebody. I came to prophesy over your destiny. I came to prophesy over your life that after today you shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. Scream as a glory. Amen. Kalima no se onamanti via la basa. Now, the names of people carry covenant in the spirit. Yeah. The names of men carry authorities in the spirit. That whenever they mention their name, their name becomes a direct representation of God really is. Ah. The enemy is after that thing your name stands for in the spirit. Yeah. At 75, you heard a strange voice telling you to leave your father's house. At 75. At 75, a voice told you, leave your father's house. Are you a child? Are you a child? The Bible never told us anybody had God in that family. No, how would you feel if apostle tells you that the Lord says go and sell your house and bring him the money? You will call him all kind of names, wouldn't you? Somebody lived for 75 years and you tell him, in order for God to begin with you, go and go into a place you have no idea of just because I want to walk with you and walk through you. Huh? The instructions of God don't make sense. They only make a resource. When life is tough and things are harder, the only system that God will ever use to bail out men is in the area of consistent obedience. Because delayed obedience is also disobedience in disguise. Ah. Ah, do you know what happens when God speaks? When he begins to speak, everything must come to a standstill. When he utters a statement concerning your life, heaven stands still. Just to look at the person God has apportioned trust and you dare dishonor his voice because of how you feel. How dare you? How dare you that he chose to use you for his own glory and he told you something and then your emotions will now compress God's voice. Such an insult to God's significance. It's such an insult. He told you to do something and you want to let God understand why God should let you do this. And God says, how dare you? Do you really know what you have lost? Hey! Hear me, church. If you pray for a testimony, the testimony signifies a gift. But whenever you pray for an authority, it stands for inheritance in the spirit. Let me break it down for you. If I give this man here what he prayed for, he would jubilate and say God has been good to him because a gift has been given to him. But if I make this man, this face towel, whereby with ease, he can replicate in diverse dimension what this stands for. He now has an inheritance. What God wants to give you is not a gift. He wants to make you what you pray for. Do we still have obedient men in this house who are willing to obey no matter the price? Eh? King Saul didn't know that God had given him a throne that his children would have to profit from his work. Look at me, everybody. Look at me. Look at me. Just imagine that you are suffering the consequence of your father's mistake. Because your father chose to dishonor God's voice. Such a pity. Huh? 
When people become disobedient, they don't suffer alone. The unborn generation must also suffer. So a child of King Saul suffered curse. All because King Saul was filled with pride. Huh? When life becomes harder, be radical for Jesus in the aid of obedience. His voice has never made sense. They only make results. Huh? How I wish men can see what they've lost. They will weep for mercy. God told me this. And whenever I begin to preach and I see this, I begin to shake in my spirit. Hey. <laughs> God has always forgiven the sins of men. But he will always consider if he can trust you again. The issue has got nothing to do with confessing the act you've committed. The issue is if he can give you the same trust he once gave you before the act happened. Many are working as forgiving saints. But they are not working as trusted fellows. And the proof that you have a dignity of God is that you have God's trust. When God spoke, what did you do? Do you know how many men have married women because of emotions? And they are suffering spiritually, not physically. Hey, you can marry a woman or marry a man who makes you feel good of yourself. And do you know one thing about life? Life can cause you to live comfortably with somebody who is not going the same direction with you. The fact you don't quarrel doesn't mean God is with you. Today, mothers have closed their mouths because of the babies they gave birth to in marriages. But they sold their birthright. My last word. Do you know Esther in the Bible? Do you know Vashti in the Bible? Do you know King Zexis in the Bible? Do you know Mordecai in the Bible? I want you to know this, friends. The book of Esther is one of the most powerful books in the Bible. Do you know why? It is one of the few books where a prophet was never mentioned in the book. There was no prophet. God called Esther a warrior, yet she never for once in her life ever used a sword to fight. Yet she won the battle. How do you call somebody a warrior if the person has never had the sword before? Yet, she was able to slay off the head of a giant with one thing. It was called honor. Hear me, friends. I want you to know that the book of Esther is a prototype of the New Testament. How? The husband called King Xerxes is God. Vashti is the Jew. Hear me, church. When Christ came, he came to honor the promise of God. By saving the Jews first. But the Jews felt they were so important. That God wouldn't come in the way of Christ. So God took them out of the order. And said go and look for somebody else for me. So the angels of God came upon the street. And caught slave. Which is Esther. Esther was a slave. Esther was brought into God's court. The Bible says that after Esther was adorned with dignity. Mordecai said. Don't think that because you've ascended the throne, you have everything. Look at Vashti. Look at the Jew. The person that advised Esther to remain important to God's voice was called Mordecai. Mordecai is a prototype of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost says, I've been sent by God to remind you how God took the Jews out and brought you in as a new covenant. When God speaks, obey him well. name fits you and he said yeah kados 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 I wave your hands for me church kados kados
Kadosh, 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 we seek is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone say, He alone is worthy. Please run for me. We sing Kadosh, 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 eh? Kadosh, Kadosh, Aya. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh. Are you worthy of your hands of church? Kadosh, Kadosh. He is the Lamb, sir. He is the Lamb of God who sits on the shadows. Lift your voice and say, He alone. He. Apostle. Let us teach the church that the bell out system to enter into the life of abundance is complete obedience. Hey, pain is the foundation, obedience is the rock. Mm. Number two, and I pray for somebody here. Oh, God, listen in this house. Clap your hands. Here. Yes. Number two. Let me show you how God restores men whenever they feel that they've lost in life. This will shock you. Everything you are believing God for, every miracle a man desires. Every breakthrough, a man is looking for in the spirit. I want you to know that that pain became a possibility because somebody on earth went through the same pain like you. Hear me well. If our doctor here begins to have certain desires for a certain achievement in life, it didn't just happen because he wanted to have it. It became a possibility because that request is being hanged in the spirit. Hear me. People just don't wake up and have certain desires. So whenever you are there and all of a sudden there's a desire to get married, I want you to know that it is actually something somebody has worked for in the spirit. Things are not willing to come into the heart of men if things are not willing to relieve itself in the mind of men. So when things become a desire, it's a possibility to be attained. Hear this word. You had that desire because somebody paid the price for that. And the Lord honors men by acknowledging unto the name of men the trials they go through. So he tells you that the cheapest way to have access into that is to honor men for who they are. When you acknowledge people for what they have gone through, you are not worshiping them in the human sense. You are acknowledging the God that kept them through the pain so that God can cut your generations for your life. That's simple. People don't know that whenever God wants to shorten their journey in the place of pain, he brings them people that look like their answers. But they can't see. People just don't appear anyhow. People just don't appear anyhow. When people appear, they appear because in the spirit, God has seen that you need something from them that will give you the access into what you want. The question is, how sensitive are you to tell the worth and the value of man. Your inability to communicate a man's value will never give you the permission to work in the experience of the promise promises. Hear me, church. Lot became rich not because he prayed. Lot became rich because he got connected to Abraham. <laughs> Jesus, the son of the living God, walked under closed heavens 
until he officially recognized who John the Baptist was. Remember, he went through the jungle for 40 years. Yet, there was no answer to his desire until a man baptized him. You are going through a season in your life. You need somebody who has what it takes to bail you out to come around you. Until you physically honor them for what they have done, you will never walk through destiny. Hey? Pride has caused many to lose the people God sent their way. Insensitivity to divine timing has caused many people to let go of the people that God sent their way. Who is that person that God brought your way that because you were insensitive to time, you couldn't pick their value from the spirit? Who is that person? Are you aware that the Christians who Apostle Paul killed in Jerusalem died because there was no watchman that watched over the city? But because Ananias was the watchman over Damascus, God couldn't kill the Christians there because God had to seek permission first from Ananias if Paul could kill them. Men are custodians of things that can't be seen by people. So whenever you acknowledge men for what they stand for in the spirit, you have easy access to become who they are. Who is that person God sent you away? Ah. <laughs> you are the average of your association. If a life can't be connected to the very voice God is willing to listen to, trust me, it will be very hard to walk in the fulfillment of your promises. I'm telling you. Who is the person that God brought away that you couldn't tell who their worth is? It's a pity when people think they are doing favor to their own helpers. Huh? The fact you helped your helper doesn't mean your helper needed you. The help you gave your helper was only a way for you to get help. Ah! Hey! Are you aware that you can be around somebody for so many years and you may never walk in the fulfillment of what the person stands for because you never walk by revelation. Peter was eating with Jesus. It was God that gave Peter the revelation of what Christ stands for. How is it that Peter couldn't tell who Christ God came among men and they couldn't tell who God really is. So it's possible to be around somebody and still don't know who people really are. If you dare judge a man after the flesh, you'll be out of God's context. Because people's true it begins when God tells who they are. The Bible says, and Moses was led by God to lay his hands upon Joshua. And Joshua was now filled with the spirit of God and wisdom. All because Moses did so. Who is that very person that God has sent you away to shortcut your pain that you can't tell? Remember the Bible said that he that marries a good woman has found favor with the Lord. So in God's kingdom, the code for seeking for favor is to find the right wife and not to pray about it. If you go to God seeking for favor and there's no woman that stands for like favor can come to you because favor reveals a woman at the prayer point. Who is that person that life brought your way that you could appreciate them? In my next visit, I'll give you the extra two points that will help people walk through life with ease. But for now, keep these two things. Pain is a man's value. Pain is a man's life. Pain is a man's future. Pain is a man's prophecy. Pain is everything a man needs to become who they are. Remember, if you are going through pain, you are standing in the battlefield of God. And both men are spirit are watching you. If you give up on the pain, you have insulted God's integrity. Because God will not permit anything to happen to you until he gives the permission for that to happen. If you give up on the battle, you have failed God. Remember, 
that you are not going to be the only person to suffer from the consequence. Your unborn children too will suffer. Pain is your prophecy. Be outstanding, church. Can we take it up? Be upstand. Be upstand. Lift up your hands. Can we pray today? We'll be done in the next 15 minutes. Lift your hands above your head. You have done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. If I had 10,000 thongs, it still would be enough. We're saying now. What shall I render? Say, what shall I render unto Jehovah? For he has done for me, say. What shall I render unto Jehovah? Say, for he has done for me. Lift your hands and sing with me. Nara, 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 say. Wave your hands unto God. Wave your hands unto God. Wave your hands, we sing. Nara. Sing Nara, 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 say. Wave your hands as thanksgiving. Nara. Wave your hands with sing Nara, 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 Nara. Nara. For the last time. We're singing, what shall I render, say? What shall I render unto Jehovah, say? Wave your hands as thanksgiving for he. He has done so very much for me. What shall I render, say? What shall I render unto Jehovah? For he has done for me. Wave your hands, we sing in the rain. Lord, We're singing a rock, the 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 We worship you, Lord. We our last song, our last song. Somebody lift up your hands and wave your hands. We give, we give, we give, we give. Oh, shout. Hey. What a presence. We worship you, Lord. Somebody wave your hands. You are, you are, you are, we give, we give, we give, we give, we give, oh my shot, oh shot, come on, oh my shot, let's take the money, cause I, I don't know, say, somebody, we are going slower. We are going slower. We are going slower. 
lift our blood. We give, we give, we give, we give, we serve. Ah! Hey! We are We are going slow. Are you ready? Lift up your hands, somebody. We give, we give, we give, we give, say, water. Father, we love you. We worship you, Lord. We. Our last song. Lift up your hands. You are. You are worthy of my praise. Oh, 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 oh. You, you are worthy of my praise. We sing, yes, yes, yes. You are worthy of my praise. Oh, yes. oh, 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 you are. You are worthy of yes, yes. my praise. We sing. We call him Yahweh. Yahweh. Okay. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. Lift your voice. We sing Yahweh. For the way. You are worthy of my praise. Open the floodgate of heaven. We say, we say, open the floodgate. Say, open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Open the flag and see. Open the flag. You're closing up. Let it rain. Oh, shut up. That, 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 that shit. Let it rain. Open the flag and see. Open the flag and Now lift your hands above here. Now I'll be very glad if you can come out from your chest. Come out from your chest. And lift up your hands. Lift your hands higher. You are going to clap your hands. And you will pray now. That Father, as I begin to pray, everything I have lost in my life, today I recover everything. I stand on the authority of the word. And I recover everything. I recover everything. Amen. Clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and pray.
up your hands and pray. Somebody club your hands. Rata baba dos. Rata baba dos. Rata baba dos. Somebody club your hands. Clap your hands and pray. Ia tega na dosa, rata na dosa, sata na na biasa. Rata ya bana, rata bana 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 bana. Rata bana bana Club your eyes and pray. Shut up, Adosh. Rata Bayaba. Club your eyes and pray. Lift up your hands. We are leaving the next five minutes. Now close your eyes. I'll be very glad if you can stretch your hands towards the altar for me. your hands towards the altar. <laughs> Lift your hands towards the altar. Close your eyes. You are telling God that Father, this is my heart's desire. This is my request. This is my request. The Father, as I begin to pray, grant me a testimony. Grant me a testimony. Grant me a testimony. Lift your voice and pray. 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 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. You've got two minutes more. There is power in the name of Jesus. Now place your hands on your head. Close your eyes. I see five people here. And I see the Spirit of God releasing a miracle upon their life i see five people here and i see the hand of the lord coming upon them close your eyes i see pastors in the atmosphere now, by the count of seven, the Spirit of God will come upon people's life. I see fresh oil. I see fresh rain. I see fresh impartation. It is happening right now. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy. Let these seven people be touched. Holy Ghost. Let your grace touch them now. Let your unction touch them now. I see seven people. I'm waiting for the next five. I'm waiting for the next four. I see parcel. I see parcel. I see parcel. I see a box. This is a full box made of gold. A full box made of oil. I see a full box. And God is telling me someone's life is changing once and for all. It is happening. I see the fourth person. God just touched you. My God. Look, look at oil. 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 Fresh. 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 Fresh, 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 fresh oil, my God. Fresh oil, my God. Someone's pain is cancelled forever. Someone's pain is cancelled forever. Someone's pain is cancelled forever. Someone's pain is cancelled for my God. Look at the Spirit of God touching the life of God's people, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Oh my God, where are the ushers? The Spirit of God is touching God. My God, I tell get the break a tooth. I tell my tooth. I tell you, why the ushers? Why the ushers? Why the ushers in this church? Your hands on your head. Why the ushers here? I see deliverance taking place. Your hands on your head. Someone's life is changing once and for all. 
Someone's life is changing. Oh, why the oceans? Oh, Takatule Manta. This is beautiful. God is telling me that someone is going to sing a new song. Oh, come on, take it, my car, my car. A new song has been released. A new song has been released. A new song. A new song. Where's the oil? A, a, a new song. A, a new song. A new song. A new song. Do these ushers know what I thought they're doing? Your hands on your head. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Your hands on your head. I hear God telling me that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Your hands on your head. God is giving somebody a testimony between now and the next three hours. Oh, Jesus, I receive it. I just saw God changing someone's garment. And this is a white garment. A white garment. A white garment. And the white garment will fall on two people now. I see one person from the right. I see one person from the left. Oh, where are the ushers? Oh, these ushers. Are, are you ready at all for this? Where are the ushers? If you are ready for a touch, your hands on your head. In the next two seconds, I will drop down the mic. Oh! I hear God telling me that keys. I see God telling me that the keys to open the heavens. 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 I see God releasing the key. I see God releasing the key. I see a lady here. The key, the key, the key, the key. It's been released. 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 Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. There's somebody at the back. Help her. Help her. Help her. The key. A key. Help her. A key. A key. My ushers, my ushers. Have you seen this before? Oh, ushers. Kadima Luatai. Eleman de Lebosai. I mean, Ninus. Oh, I see keys from heaven. I hear in my ears Isaiah chapter 22, the verse 22. It says, The key of the house of David I shall put upon your shoulder. And whatever you open shall be open. Oh, God. What is happening? God just told me here that there is somebody here. I hear in my right ears ideas to become a millionaire. Who is ready for this anointing? Lift your hands higher. Uh, God says there are three people in the house. The Lord says kingdom ideas to become kingdom millionaires. I don't know who wants this, but I see only three people here. Holy Spirit, let the grace of God locate those people now. Let the Spirit of God locate those people now. It will start like fresh fire. You will feel this fire in your hand. You will feel this fire in your hand. You will feel this fire in your hand. Let the spirit of God. Oh, are you ready, my God? You will feel this fire in your hand. God is telling me, it's an anointing for kingdom of my God. I see a young man here. The mantle just fell on your head. The mantle just fell on your head. I see another man here. God is telling me, fresh oil, 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 fresh oil. It is release, 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 it is release. My God. Lift up your hands. No, in the next minute, I'll be done with this. Lift up your hands. Look at what God is doing here. Oh. 
No wonder this is the house of the prophet. Lift up your hands. As I'm communicating, I see the prophetic mantle in the atmosphere. Oh. What is God doing here? I see prophetic tokens. I see handkerchiefs. I see mantles. I see mantles. And I hear God telling me that the giftings in people are being recognized. And I see the giftings taking place. And I hear in my right ear that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Elijah is touching somebody here. Elijah is touching somebody here. And I see Elijah placing a key. And I hear in my ears, you will see like fire. I hear God telling me, baptism of fire. Let the person be touched now. Watch this, 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 watch this. Bring the person to me. Oh, even media men are getting touched. What is happening? Bring them to me. Bring them to me. Bring them to me. Oh, Talibra Takese. Etivika Tuzebele. Bring them to me. Oh, oh. What is happening? I am anti Galiatos. Ah, Shalaman Nuseris. Lift up your hands. Oh, I see the last person here. Let me release the mantle and stay home. Open your hands. Oh, oh. I hear in my right ear the double mantle of Elijah. The double mantle for Elijah. I don't know who's ready for this. Lift your hands higher. If you are ready for power, lift your hands higher. My God. If you are ready for power, lift up your hands. My God. If you are ready for grace, lift up your hands. God is speaking to me. There are two people here. I, I hear the heavens raining fresh oil. I see the heavens opening in the clouds. Holy Spirit, let your grace touch your people. Holy Spirit, let your mantle touch your people. Holy Holy Spirit, let your oil locate your people by the count of seven, by the count of seven, by the count of seven. It is happening, it is happening. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Oceans, oceans, be very fast. Oceans, oh, oceans. Oh, lift up your hands. You know, our time is up. Those who fell under the, under the power of God, then, please let them stand up for me. Our time is up. If I want to start releasing impartation, we're not close today. Those who were touched by God, let them be on their feet for me. Some people, they did not fall down physically, but they felt a strong presence that God was touching them. Let them join the crowd, please. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Ushers, please let them line up very fast, please. If they were touched by God, let them join the crowd. Let them stand in one line for me and let them hold their hands. God told me to use my suit for impartation right now. This is powerful. My God. My God. Let them stand in one line. Lift up your hands. Let them join your hands. Join your hands and lift it higher. If you are part of the people that felt God's touch, join your hands and lift your hands higher. Some will have difficulty in standing. Out of the many people gathered here, I saw seven strong men. I saw seven strong men. I saw seven strong men. Oh, yes. yes. You know, when they fall like this, you take them from that place. Oh, yes. So no one steps on them. Oh, come on. Let's make sure we apply wisdom as well to this. As I'm speaking, I, I hear an angel telling me that he's blowing the horn, the horn of victory. The horn of victory. The horn of victory. 
The horn of victory. The horn of victory. The horn of victory. And just seven people here. I see the shofar giving to you. And I saw seven people. Father, release this horn. Release this shofar. Over seven people. It will, it will happen now. Fresh, fresh, fresh oil. Fresh oil, fresh oil. Now, take place now. Take place now. We're on the count of three. One, two. My, watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Fre fresh oil. Fresh breath. Fresh breath. Fresh impartation. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. My God, my God. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fre help, help. Oh, just help them for me. Beautiful. Oh, Takatus, I, I hear in my ears. is happening the lord is turning up a gift in the house oh oh this house is so blessed my god my god lift up your hands ah father because they entered into the month of july let this month be the month of testimony in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands together for Jesus. Oh, somebody clap your hands together for Jesus. Please, can I lay my hands over these people here? So let the ushers help them stand on their feet so I lay my hands over them. Let me speak. Our, our time is up. Our time is up. I, I didn't know that God will take us this deep, honestly. Where's the oil? Once I lay my hands over them, let them go back. God be with you. God be with you. Once I tell them with the oil, oh. You know, there are some people, eh? We need to have extra tax in Uber for them. Because they can't go home physically. Their presence will touch them so strong. Oh, look what's happening. Watch this. Watch this. Their presence will be so strong. Oh, yeah, it will be so strong. We satisfy our man. It is settled. It is settled. Oil for preservation. Oh, just help these people sit down for me. This is called the house of champions. Let them sit down for me. Let them sit down for me. Oh. Leave it here. Bless you. Oh. Fresh oil. Attack at once. Anything I was talking. I break your kicks, my cartoons. I, 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 I dismantle you from every marine power that will hold you. No matter the count of three, I lose you, I lose you, I lose you, I lose you out. I lose you, I lose you out. It is done. It is done. Oh, just let them sit down for me. <laughs> I'm make case this is. This is called a supernatural service. Let's let's finish in two minutes. Our time is up. Yeah. 
Sit down, church. Father, we give you a praise. Give me the notes, sir. You are Alpha and Omega. Father, we thank you for this word. We worship you, our Lord. I'm leaving now. You are worthy to be praised. Now, I need everyone to sit down for me, church. There's something God showed me now. You are Alpha. Where's the oil? Apostle, can I put it here, please? Can I? I can't, right? Okay. Now, can I get a bowl, please? An empty bowl. Our Lord, you are worthy to be praised. We give you all. All right. We worship you, our Lord. Hey, you are Wave your hands if God has been good. We sing, we give you all. Oh. Hey, hey. Glow. Angels are everywhere. Can you see them? We worship you. Ah. Why are, where's the bow? Put it here. Thank you. Now, stretch your hands towards the bow for me. The Lord told me in the course of the preaching that this oil that has been poured in the bowl, in the spirit, has become preservation for you. You didn't clap your hands. I'm going to tell you what the enemy has done against the life of people. And I'll tell you the powers that are watching over this territory in the spirit. A battle has taken place in the spirit. I'm telling you. I don't know, but as I'm speaking right now, in my right ear, I hear something like Hen- Henry's. Henry's. Is that a name? Your last name, Henry's. Henry's. Come. Henry's. God told me to walk to this side and look for the person called Henry's. How are you doing? Can I pray for you? God wants me to use you as a point of somebody called John. Do you know John? Your brother. The reason why I poured the oil was because in the vision, I saw that your brother would die at 7 (laughs) o'clock. God says, prophet, pour the oil and look for Henry's. Doctor, I saw that this lady had the call at 7 p.m. That John, your brother, has died. Can we pray? God told me the first attempt was to kill that guy when he turned 35 years old. And they couldn't get him. Oh. And it looks like this is a 36th birthday about to celebrate it. And they want to kill him. I see his wife praying. That John, wake up. Your children are calling for you. I saw a lady called Casey. 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 Oh. Lift up your hands. No. Tima Katule. Who is this enemy? Lift up your hands. Can I prophesy here? I speak over your life. As you lift your hands above.
of you head. You will not die before your time. 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 Scream and say, I will not die. Scream and say, I will not die. Shout and say, I will not die. Sit down for me, church. Sit down. Ah. Sit down for me. <laughs> oh. You see, what is happening here? What is happening here? It's called the manifestation of a prophet. Opians. I saw that all of a sudden this man began to complain of heart pain and his breath went out. And the one that pained me the most was one of the sons he loved so much. The son was saying, Daddy, wake up. But the man couldn't wake up. And the son is called Jacob. Jacob. Jacob says, Daddy, wake up. Can't you see I'm calling you? Who is this enemy? And he meant that Katulefe. A Tuki Atalus. No, you are going to clap your hands right now. And you will say you will not die. I will not die. Clap your hands and pray. I will not die. Clap your hands and pray. I will not die. In the spirit of death, clap your hands and pray. I will not die. I will not die. I will not die. Clap your hands. I will not die. Sit down. Sit down. Open your hands. This is beautiful. No. It's strange how come the enemy wants to finish such a humble family like this. Wonderful family and the enemy wants to finish them like that. This is serious. Open your hands. Ah. God says John will not die. Man of God, I saw God protecting John. God protected Casey. God protected Jacob. And even this lady. I see women around you. And I saw that this lady became like a fashion model. And I saw people wearing her clothes. And it's like in the vision, she began like a clothing line. Oh. Open your hands. Somebody's behind the lady. He says, why have you forgotten to pray for me? When I asked the person who she was, he said, I'm called Nalu. Nalu. Nalu, your sister. Nalu, where is she? That's the daughter. The father. Wow. When he said that's a stepdad, I heard Etienne. Ah, huh? Etienne. Nalu. Oh, the one that got married to Stephen. Ah. Ah. As I look, I'm looking for Nalu. I'm seeing somebody called Lee. Ah. Oh. This is beautiful. No. Wait. In my vision, I saw that Nalu and Steve were together. 
And I saw that these people were happy and they entered into Dubai. I saw a honeymoon in Dubai. And the demon said, why should these people be happy? And I saw that in the spirit, they said, then let us also fight the brother who stood to pray for them. And they said, the one called Cain. Said, like, one called Cain that prayed. Oh, I was there when Cain proposed to the lady called Blue. Come on. Lift up your hands. As I'm talking, I see the Holy Ghost come like fire on this altar. Wait. And for strange reasons, I see people running helter skelter. And we came to stand the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, I saw the enemy wanting to dig a graveyard. All because the enemy said we're looking for dead people. I heard God say, you can't find the dead among the living. Wait, 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 wait. Who killed the lady called Monique? Who killed Monique? Who killed Monique? Monique Richardson. Who killed this lady? Oh, strange. Oh. Man of God. Ah. Why is it that now that they want to give God the praise and then they finally took this lady away from their life? I pray for you. Look at me. You are blessed, eh? God wants you to finally rest in the month of August. Your birth month. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the seventh. Okay. 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 Open your hands. I pray for you all. Whatsoever the enemy has created, it is canceled after today. Somebody clap your hands together for Jesus. Scream and say, I will not die. is a liar. Please, you know one thing? Make sure you stay connected to God. Especially this house. Ah, do we have names like Rumen? Rumen. The first day. I look at you, I hear Rumen. Rumen. Rumen Hendricks. Oh. Nah. You have been called for time as such like this. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. <laughs> when I was coming there, eh, I was extremely tired. I told myself I would just come and preach and go. I didn't know that God had something like this for God's people. I'm telling you. Lift up your hands. God wants me to pray for somebody here exactly by Wednesday because of an evil thing the enemy wanted to do on Wednesday. But before I do that, I don't know if my ears are hearing correct, but I hear something like Masha. Masha. I, I'm, I'm looking for Masha's mother. You are the mother. Masha. Oh, do you know Auntie Beta? Come to me. Come to me. Oh. oh. Lift up your hands. This is beautiful. This is Wednesday. This is Masha holding a boy in the hand. The boy is crossing the road. Car wants to hit the boy. Everybody saying Ben, 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 Ben. What has happened to Ben? No, 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 no. 
Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Scream and say, I will not die. Scream and say, I shall not die. Scream and say, fire. Apostle, I believe God brought us for a time like this to correct certain others in the spirit. Now, can I declare here? Hey, I stand on this altar in this church. Lift up your hands. And I speak over the state of Florida. I speak over the city of West Palms. Any demonic power looking for fresh blood. Can I prophesy? The plans of the enemy are cancelled. The plans of the enemies are cancelled. Please, please. Man of God. I saw the kind of battles Auntie Beta went through when giving birth to Masha. Masha prosper. Yes, please. Ah. This lady was thinking that she would have given birth to her daughter in, in, in Christmas time. Because I saw that the thing started around 24th of December. It will start and go. It will start and go until they entered into the new year in the month of January. God told me she was thinking she would give birth to better in the month of January 1st. Until she finally appeared 2nd of January. Oh. The same battle this lady went through when giving birth to the daughter is the same battle anyone wants to do when give. Oh, this is strange. Ben can't die. Open your hands. Open your hands. Ben can't die. Lift up your hands. Please. Where are the ushers? So I'll be very glad that if the ushers can bring the people here, those here, Touch the altar. Touch your head and sit down and say, I will not die. Very fast. Very fast. Very fast. Our time is almost up. Oh. Our time is up. No, we'll come back again. <laughs> oh. Give me your hands. Man of God. This man here. The man that died called Bounce Moro has come to live in this man. Oh. Moro. Touch the altar. Touch the altar. Oh. Be first. Touch the altar and touch your head for me now. If you are done, this row, please come. Oh. Oh, has gonna be gone to us. Be fast. Woo. Nah. What a presence. Father, thank you for this house. Thank you for this house. Please, what are the ushers here? Can you give me an envelope, please? An envelope, please. Envelope? Yes. Give me 15, please. Very fast, please. Oh. Katan to Rekate. 15. Papa, let her understand that God has redeemed this lady. Oh. Please be very fast. Fifteen, right? Yeah. Perfect. Let her go. Come down with her, please. 
Let me just hand pick this and just leave. Ah, tell me, sir. Tell me, sir. Oh. Oh. The book of Psalm, chapter 50, the verse number 5. I would be very glad if they can have that project at least. I'm coming to this family, please. Come here. You know, sometimes the unction becomes so you can't even control yourself. The Lord asked me to pour the oil on this bowl. If you are not ready, don't come. If you are not willing to be preserved, don't come. If you are not expecting an instant breakthrough from now and December, don't come. I'm telling you. When I began to prophesy, the Lord showed me 15 people here. He says, young man, Raise exactly 15 people that are willing to raise a seed of protection for themselves and the family as a whole. He says 15 people. And in my right ear, I heard this quotation. Hear me. This is the house of principle and the house of sacrifice. 15 people. No, look at the one that's happening right here. 15 people. 15 people are going to release a seed of just $1,000. And say, man of God, this is a covenant I'm raising unto God because I can't lose in life. You are raising this as a protection altar for yourself, your husband, your children, your parents that I can't go through pain again. And watch how God will come through for you. I'm telling you. This is strange. I see angels raining oil here. If you are part of those 15 people, come and wait for you. 15 people. Give me oil. Can I touch your feet, please? The Lord bless you and make you great. He will cause to shine forth and magnify your steps. The Lord lift you up and watch over you. God is going in peace. The Lord preserve you both and watch over your lives. And I pray for you that when the need comes for divine settlement, you'll be honored by God. The Lord bless you both. Bless you too. I pray for sin. Whatever the enemy has said is about cancelled. There's liberty for you. Go in peace. I'm waiting. Can I get 15 people here? 15 people. The man of God, I can't watch the enemy take my life for a ride. Please rush and come here. We are living in the next two seconds. We can't watch the enemy take us for a ride. 15 people. Are you coming? Yeah, please touch, touch, touch. God bless you. God bless you, man. Apostle, how can we release the offering, please? Oh, perfect. Now, those of you with a card, you can, you can swipe now. You can swipe now, right? If you're having cash, you can probably place an order as well. Is that okay? So you can do probably through Zelle or through PayPal or any systems that has been given to the church. Right. Give me hands. May God preserve you. And watch over your destiny. Write the word Weedland. Weedland. 
I'll tell you why I'm saying that. And then you write A C A double L E like Akala. Who is that? Your cousin. You know there are things you can't communicate in public. Sit down. Lift up your hands. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. I declare protection. I declare honor. Are you coming, sir? Okay, that's fine. All right. So I was told that there are people watching us online right now who also want to give their prophetic seats. The systems are going to be projected on the live stream. Perfect. So those of you watching us from the house, we have projected the systems right now. You are going to release yours right now. And that's the PayPal account. That is the Zill account as well. And you can also text to give as well. Right. I called for 15 people. I don't know how many came out. Four persons, right? So how many left? Eleven, right? Can I get eleven people here? Who would say, man of God, I want to enter into covenant with God because I wouldn't want the enemy to take my life for a ride. And like I said, just between this very month of July to the end of December, you will see how God is going to pe put people's life in a wonder where they will experience God's glory. Let's do this in two seconds. And let's leave now. Bless you, ma. Do you want one? God bless you. Please help me for me. God bless you, ma. Help us. God bless you. Lift up your hands. I will. All right. Lift up your hands. Goodness and message will follow you. All the days of your life. I declare God's glory upon your destiny. It is well. Amen. God bless you. Lift up your church. You are lifted and blessed. And I declare this week as a week of total liberty for you. You will not fail. Be upstanding. And lift up your hands. This is your week of joy. Your week of liberty. A week of hope, a week of laughter. It is done. It is settled. Somebody say amen. amen. If you're a member in this church, I want you to know that you are in the best place of your life. Those of you who took the envelopes, I'm expecting you to have yours released now so that our apostle can lay hands over you right now. I don't know why God wants me to do this for everybody here. God still wants us to raise people. I'm about to leave and God says no. He says he still wants us to raise people who will do this for their family and for themselves because of the evil at hand. You, you couldn't do a thousand. But you really want to be part of this. But you can do a 500. Can I get just five people here? Just five. God says, look at what is happening in the spirit. It's powerful. And I see people's life being taken for a ride. He says five people. Please, after service, let those five come and take an envelope. Right. I want you to know you are in the best house. And I want you to serve with everything within you. Your time has come for signs and wonders. 
and you will experience God's glory. Till we meet again, let's keep serving Jesus and God shall honor you. Clap your hands and say hallelujah, church. Wow. Listen, I want us to do something. I want everyone, we want to sow into the life of the man of God. Amen? We want to sow into the life of the man of God. The Bible said those that receive a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet reward. Please put the giving options on the screen. All those that are watching that wants to give. Whatever God touches your heart. Those who want to sow into the life of the man of God, $200, come forward. Those who want to sow $100, come forward. If you want to sow into this prophetic anointing and and believe God for that altar of protection, um, what the Lord just did just blew my mind. And I wish everybody can sow into the life of a prophet. Amen? Please come forward if you want to sow into the life of the prophet. Come forward. This is a covenant between you and God. How much you want to sow into the life of the man of God. When you see such an anointing, you don't just leave. I want everyone to sow something. It's between you and God. That God, I want to honor the prophet with this seed. Everyone must sow something. Amen. And come forward, let me pray for us. I need to run to the airport right now. Let's hurry up. Let's hurry up. Let's hurry up. I want you to talk to God how much God wants you to sow. Everyone can sow something. See, don't let this moment pass you by. If you have eyes to see the grace of God that was manifested here. A prophetic offering given to prophets is very important. People's lives have changed because of what they give to a prophet. This is between you and God. How much you want to sow, I want you to come and enter into covenant with God. God, I recognize your prophet. I'm sowing this into his life. And Father, I pray for multiplication. When Elijah met the woman, she only had a little to eat and die. That's all she, the woman had. But Elijah said, prepare for me first. And the Bible said, when the woman obeyed, the flour multiplied. The oil did not go dry. There was multiplication. Anytime you come in contact with the prophet of God, God releases the anointing for multiplication. I don't know what you are going through or any area of lack in your life. You have seen the prophetic anointing. So into it and tell God, Father, fix this area. Protect me and my family. The prophet went to the house of a barren woman. The woman was good to the prophet. And the prophet said, what can we do for this woman? The servant said, I perceive there is no baby in this house. And the prophet said to the woman, a year by this time you shall conceive. And that miracle took place. Listen, when you see a prophetic anointing, don't just watch, engage it. And one of the ways we engage is what we sow into it. Amen? And so, Father, with your hands lifted, I pray that, God, whatever is given shall speak for your people. I pray that you will bring multiplication and strange favors such as your people have never received before. And I pray that, God, let these testimonies echo in the lives of your people. May they trace their testimonies to today. Thank you for the deliverances. Thank you, O oh God, for the salvation from the spirit of death that the enemy projected against your children. I pray that every single one of us here is preserved in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please, our sister is there. Please go swipe if you want to give... Um, the giving options are on there. Make sure you give. Amen. How many of you have been blessed? How many of you want the prophet to come back? Yeah. Hallelujah. We will have a special um, service with him. Amen. We are going to, we have special gifts for our graduates, those who graduated. 
and we're going to take the communion. Amen. So let's welcome um, our sister to take us through um, the celebration of our graduates, and after we'll take the communion. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Um, we'll just do this quick. Um, we just want to congratulate everyone that um, graduated for 2023, whether it's pre-K all the way up to professional school. Um, so, Jean, whenever you're ready, you can play the video. And I'll just um, call up the names that were given to me. Um, we have... Nasir, you can come up. He just graduated. Oh, Ashley Riley, she's not here, but she, she graduated as well. Oh, we have Vanessa Bessie, but I know her parents are here on behalf of her, but I don't know if she's here herself. Uh, yes. Um, we have Jonice Lee Matherin. She just received her master's in public administration. Uh, and we also have Jenna, who finished cosmetology school. And we have Claudia Blues, who received her BA in psychology. Is that correct? OK. <laughs> um, we just want to just show appreciation to you all. If someone could help bring the cake over, gentlemen, can I get you all? We're going to have y'all cut it and wish, wish you all prosperous journeys on your career in your education. You can come over, guys. Jenna, Nasir. Let's place it right here. Mm -hmm. 